Developing tonight, Louisiana State University announcing that they will enact a zero-tolerance policy for hazing. It comes after the death of Maxwell Groover. The 18-year-old freshman was on the Baton Rouge campus just 29 days before he died while he was pledging Pi, Pi Delta Theta. Max's parents, Steve and Rayanne, this is them at his high school graduation with him, they spoke to him before he left about the dangers of hazing. They even warned him about what had happened to young Timothy Piazza, the Penn State sophomore who died in February of 2017 after being left unresponsive for 12 hours at his fraternity house before any of his so-called brothers picked up the phone to call for help. So now the Groovers and the Piazzas are joining forces together with other parents of hazing victims to make their voices heard to college leadership and to students across this country. Max was a gentle giant. He had an infectious laugh that, you know, he shook with his shoulders every time he laughed and gave the biggest hugs, and he was a goofball. He loved LSU. He couldn't wait to get there, and he was ready. And we were ready to let him go and experience that part of his life. We never expected what happened to him to happen. So they had him in a room that was black, dark, with uh, strobe lights going on, loud music, and they would ask them questions about the fraternity or recite the Greek alphabet, and if you got it wrong, then they would have you just basically take, I guess, the handle or the bottle of alcohol and just turn it up and continue oh. to drink until, as they called it a pool, uh, until they told you to stop. His blood alcohol content was 0.496 the following day, so that night it, it had to be a, a lot higher. I'm here because we keep saying you need to see something. If you see something, say something. And I saw my son in a coffin, and now I'm saying something about it. He shouldn't have been in that coffin. It shouldn't have happened. And we're going to do everything we can to change why that happened. I am here because we need to make a change. We need to stop hazing altogether in fraternities, sororities, and other walks of life. I'm here because there's strength in numbers, and I think together we can be a powerful force. Nobody is wearing a toga and swallowing a goldfish. This is hard alcohol, this is handles, this is uh, crushing glass and doing planks on broken glass, this is getting branded, uh, this is fighting each other like a fight club. Th this is wrong. This is not bonding. This is not tradition. When Tim's story came out, and it's such a horrific story, it got people talking. Piazza died in the hospital on February 4th from a traumatic brain injury and a shattered spleen. Prosecutors believe he could have survived had authorities been called sooner. And then seven months later, Max happens, and it, got, it kept people talking. 18-year-old Maxwell Groover, an LSU freshman from Roswell, Georgia, was rushed from the fraternity house and died at the hospital. And, you know, unfortunately, seven weeks later was another boy. Andrew Coffey is seven weeks later. It kept people talking. Nine men are now facing charges in connection to the hazing death of a Florida State fraternity pledge. 20-year-old Andrew Coffey died in November. His blood alcohol level was reportedly more than five times the legal limit to drive. We've been thrust into this position not by our choice, but it is our choice to be here because we feel obligated to prevent this from happening to other people. And when this happened to the Groovers and to the Coffees and the Ellises, it was like a knife through the heart that were we not speaking out loud enough, were people not listening, we need to speak out more because we have to stop it. If Tim saw what developed from his story, uh, he would have looked at it and he would have been appalled at how he was treated. He would have been appalled at the indifference to, to his life that uh, the, the members of the Beta Theta Pride fraternity showed towards him. And I think, frankly, I would have had a discussion with him and I would have said, Tim, that's not you. You, you, you don't need to be joining a fraternity. And I think he would have gotten it pretty easily because that's not who he was. That's just not what he did. 
think he'd say he was sorry. I think he'd feel bad that this happened and that, that he would think that he let us down. But he didn't let us down. The people that killed him let us down. I think he'd be looking down at us and he'd be proud of the fact that we're carrying this torch and hopefully saving other people in the future. People are listening and, and the difference is being made and I think Tim would look down and he'd be happy and, and, and say, keep going, there's more work to do. We found um, a passage that Max had written in a journal that said God works in funny ways. He sometimes does bad to ultimately create good. And we felt that spreading the word is, is how we're gonna create that good from, from Max's passing. I think he would give me one of his big hugs and he'd be like, Mom, I love you so much. Thank you. We're gonna stay on this story. We talk about students being killed in schools. Uh, these are students who are being killed on campuses um, by, in part by the acts of the people who are supposed to be their friends around them. So uh, th this is a very important topic, and we're going to stay on it.